Hello and welcome to our webinar. I'm Jason Abbott, Director of Sales for Ajax. We are pleased to have our application technology partner, VentureForth, here to discuss intelligent asset maintenance in hazardous environments. Along with the discussion and Q&A, VentureForth will do a quick demo of their Oracle Cloud mobile app that runs on the Ajax 10 intrinsically safe tablet, providing a safe way for technicians to work in a highly restricted areas, such as oil and gas, chemical, pharma, and other potentially combustible environments. As time allows, we'll take questions for the audience. Please enter your questions in the webinar control panel questions box on the side of your screen. If we don't get to them, we'll contact you after the webinar. With that, I'd like to introduce Charles Farnell, VentureForce CEO. Charles, over to you. Thanks a lot, Jason. And thank you to everybody to, uh, for making time today. Good morning. I can see we've got participants from uh, all over the world here, so uh, good afternoon and good evening to you guys as well. Let me give you a little bit of insight into VentureForth via this infographic. VentureForth is a cloud software company headquartered out of Atlanta, Georgia in the United States. And uh, we focus on providing solutions for asset intensive businesses. But we have a laser focus really on asset lifecycle management, enterprise asset management, uh, the supply chain, and, and field service. So why cloud and, and can you really do it in, uh, in hazardous environments? So let's explore some of the reasons that organizations are moving to cloud-based solutions and they're using VentureForth software and of course the Ajax hardware in hazardous environments. Simply put, it's, it's just easier for organizations to provision, deploy and manage solutions via the cloud. Cloud-based solutions scale much better both up and down. We can deal with spikes in business, but you can also handle downturns when we possibly need to decrease usage and subscriptions. At VentureForth, we do use the Oracle Public Cloud, which of course offers a, a best-in-class security assurance. But whether you're using Oracle, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, or even another cloud vendor, we can make sure that all the data and traffic is, is encrypted and secure, whether it's in transit or it's at rest on the, on the Ajax Windows tablet. With a cloud deployment, you know, you get rid of a lot of the costs associated with an on-premises installation. Upfront licensing is, is really replaced with cost-efficient subscriptions. So you can do a pay-as-you-go model um, and implementations don't need consultants on site. You can, tr there, there's travel and expenses are, are greatly reduced. The customers don't need to predict, uh, purchase all the, all the server and middleware hardware and, and licenses. Obviously, they're going to purchase the technician's device, but all of your CPU, storage, bandwidth, etc., that's all baked in to the subscription cost. So with cloud, we've cut deployment time from, from really from months to weeks. So onboarding of a customer is done remotely and technicians can provision our apps via cloud.ventureforth.com or from a, a mobile device management platform, an MDM as they call them, such as SOTI or Mobileye that you may be familiar with. You'll see from the, the demo coming up with the intuitive interface, we've focused a lot of resources lately to bring you a, a consumer grade app experience. So what does that really mean? Well, you know, most workforces out there, you, you're accustomed to, to news, sport and games on your devices and you expect that, that really polished user interface and that level of application. With cloud though, any any viable network connectivity will, will allow the user to work. That, that could be Wi-Fi, cellular, or satellite. And I know in a lot of the environments that we see, um, there, there is limited coverage and, and satellite may be your only option sometimes. So in, in terms of scalability, obviously we mentioned that we offer the pay-as-you-go and, and prepaid subscriptions so how do we think about that? Most of us have got cell phone plans and you can just pay for what you need. You can add capacity when needed. You can, you can cut down on your usage in, in slow periods. So we really kind of adopted that same model. We maintain all of the Oracle Cloud components and scale this environment as we add customers and users. So you, don't, you do not need to be concerned with managing IT assets. You can just leave all of that to us. This slide really highlights the benefits of moving to the cloud and the subscription-based licensing for, for both the infrastructure you know, and the software. So the cost savings of deploying in the cloud versus on-premises are, are really quite startling. 
what we're seeing is more customers are skipping traditional pilots and proof of concepts and just moving straight to a live rollout, but at a single plant or maybe one region of the business or a particular warehouse. And then that that project is capturing the benefits, capturing the ROI, and then going back to the business leaders as justification to deploy that solution organization-wide. So why, you know, why run it on, on mobile? You know, working with asset-intensive businesses, we hear three common objections. That the software is too expensive, the hardware to work in a hazardous environment is cost prohibitive, and, and the implement, implementations are just too long and complex. But with the cloud-based mobile software and the Ajax hardware, we believe we can overcome these objections pretty easily. I've described this subscription model. Uh, there are low startup costs for implementation. Of course, Ajax really offers some very competitively priced hardware that works in all sorts of work locations. So we're here to show vWork today. Um, so what is it and, and what does it do? Well, simply put, vWork handles the entire life cycle of work for a technician. So on the Ajax device, the tech should have access to all of the work package contents to ensure they can perform a shift full of work and, of course, increase wrench time and you know the time that they actually spend maintaining the asset and fixing stuff, improving operations, ensuring compliance, and, of course, most of all, most importantly, maximizing safety. So you'll see uh, from this screen and obviously from the, the kind of the demo coming up, it's, it's very easy to use. Um, we use an ATM approach or a cash point approach for you guys in Europe. Everyone's used the, an ATM, right? You just walk up, press a few buttons and perform a transaction, get your money and, and go. No, no one ever trained us on that. So that's the, the, the kind of the design model that we use internally here. So our goal is that a technician can, can really start working immediately, get up to speed with maybe just a 15 minute quick web-based training and, uh, and they start being productive. As I mentioned, you know, we support really any, any network topology, but vWork was designed to, with that in mind to, to work completely offline. So you can be out of coverage for minutes, hours, days, or, or even weeks. But being offline doesn't mean you lose that functionality. All of the screens work offline and all of your business system data is actually available to you as well. Common cases that we'll discuss further going forward are completing work orders, adding work requests, taking meter readings, and adding pictures to, to job history. And this application is, is certified by Oracle. You can actually um, provision it also from the Oracle uh, application store. And you'll, you'll be glad to know that it's available via the cloud marketplace. So we're going to see vWork in action, and I'm going to hand the presentation over here to uh, Luis, who will give us a brief product tour of vWork on the Ajax tablet. All right. Thank you. My name is Luis Hueso, and I work in marketing here at VentureForth, and thank you, Jason, as well. We will do a brief uh, product demo of vWork, and to put it in simple words, vWork contains everything that your technician needs to record their work um, while maintaining all of your assets. And now with the Ajax hardware, now that can be accomplished in hazardous environments. But let's jump right into the application. You know, it's a simple layout application and it's very powerful. Let's talk about what's on this screen. As soon as you log into the application with your username and password, you come to the work order screen. And it's very simple to use. I'll go through every uh, uh, point on the screen here, you'll see that it has a navigation menu here. Uh, I just show that on the screen and it gives me my username, the organization that I'm syncing to, and then I have a, a part here, the top three, which is, are the things that we're going to talk about, is the work orders, work requests, and assets. Uh, let's come back to the work order screen. The first thing you can do is add a work order with the plus sign here. It gives you a form. You can quickly add a new work order uh, to vWork here as well. If something is needs repairs or you see something that is needed for a particular asset, it can be recorded. We have a filters and grouping um, menu item here. I'm going to select one grouping here, and I'll do by description. And you see that now all the work orders 
have been grouped. You see these uh, gray headers over here. And you can see here that the screen has changed. It has a description grouping here right now. There's also a filter here is my assigned work to this particular technician that I've logged in. Uh, and also I have a Google style powerful search bar here and I'm gonna perform a search here. I'm just gonna type the word flare and the first half of the word inspection. So you can see it's a Google style search and anything containing that particular search query, it's gonna come up to the screen. Let's take a look inside of the details of the different work orders here on this list. All right, so I click here on the 60-day flare inspection and I can see I have a work order number, a system status, a user status, and I have more details here on the asset and a lot of fields here important for any technician performing any work on this asset. If you look at the bottom, we have a doc style um, navigation pane here and I'm gonna scroll here, you'll see how it moves. I have more information here available to me as a technician. I wanna click on operations now. All right, and I can see that I have different operations for this particular asset. I can click on materials and I have a long list of materials and I can add more if I need to. I just see the plus here at the top if I need to add more materials. I also have an attachment screen and, I, and this could be files, you know, like manuals or, you know, how to do things on a particular asset or you can also capture photos in case an inspection is completed or an inspection is needed or something that you want to point out for someone else that may work on this particular asset. So that's very powerful. I also have resources and we can uh, see there's a list of resources for this particular asset and I can also uh, take a deeper dive into the resource instances. And if you see here, we also have the ability to charge time to this resource and resource instances. Let's go back here to our previous screen and let's keep going here. I'm going to scroll here on the dock. I have the ability to uh, take meter readings and this is very powerful, you know, to, to keep track of the data on any asset. Uh, we can take failure analysis and we also have the ability to take quality plans and this is very powerful for the assets to ensure compliance in many industries. And that's uh, everything that we can do inside of a work order. Let's come back to our work order screen. Notice that VWork has remembered the previous search. Uh, it always keeps track of everything that we're doing. I'm gonna click on the navigation menu and jump to work request. And similar style, so the technician is already familiar with this. It, 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 we have a list of items here as well. These are all work requests. We can add any work request or we can perform a search similarly that we did on the work order screen. I'm gonna select the first one. All right, and I have more details on this particular work request. You know, work request number, the status, and all the work request details. We also have the ability to add attachments to this work request. So very powerful if you see, for example, a leak uh, on a pipe or in an engine or something of that nature, you can no, not only document what's needed, but also take a picture. So the next technician, for example, that will go uh, perhaps from a different department knows exactly what to look for. So that's very powerful. Let's come back to the navigation menu. And one more screen I wanna show you is the asset screen. And this is the entire list of assets available for this particular user. I'm gonna perform a search here and pull up one of the assets. All right, again, I just did a Google style search. I, I typed half of the name of an asset and it, it, it's narrowed down the entire list to one asset, very powerful. I'm gonna click on that asset and I have all the asset details. The description, the asset group, a category, serial numbers, owning departments, lots of different things here. And I also have a doc style navigation here at the bottom. So very similar to the first doc that we showed, but there's, there are some differences. So I'll go through those right now. We have asset attributes here. Uh, we have the ability to take meters outside of a work order just directly into the asset in case we need to document that. We also have a attachments that we can add. And here we have, uh, you know, and a bigger list of attachments. We have a web link here, we have some images, so that's very powerful for the technicians. Uh, we also have the ability to take quality plans for this asset. We have a uh, you know, comprehensive asset history, and this is for previous work that's been done to the particular asset. Very important for the technicians to see if uh, something was already been repaired or how many times has been repaired, so that's very important. And we also have asset logs uh, to log different things for the assets. So this is everything in a nutshell that your technician needs to maintain all your assets. And, and now with Ajax again, 
with the ADIC technology tablets, it, that can be done in hazardous environments. All right, uh, so back to you, Jason. I'll turn it back over to you, Jason. Thanks for the demo, Louise. We'd like to dig in a bit more, and I'm sure the audience has questions as well. As a reminder, if you do have a question, please type it in the question box on your control panel. If we do not get to your question before time is up, we will respond to you directly via email after the webinar. So Charles, what is the most common use case for oil and gas you're seeing for VWORK? Well, Jason, really now it's the ability to perform the entire uh, life cycle of work. As the, as the software has evolved and, uh, and as the hardware has evolved and got faster and more powerful, we've gone from just being able to do simple use cases like complete a work order to actually track that whole work order through from creation through to completion. So as Luis demonstrated, um, there's a lot of components to, to perform in work. You know, we generally need material, we need instructions, we need location information, and uh, it's nice to always be able to see the historical information on an asset. So that's really uh, the, the most common use cases are literally the performing of planned work, uh, our PM work, uh, and the ability to capture reactive work and, and emergency work orders out in the field, all while disconnected and, and away from some kind of network. To help find critical assets or able to or be able to locate workers in hazardous areas, geolocation can be helpful. Does VWork have geolocation capabilities? It, it does, and again, this is something that's really evolved, um, you know, m recently in the last 18 months or so. So this, the, you know, the geo piece kind of comes in uh, in a number of areas. Obviously, knowing where the asset is is important. If the asset's been catalogued, uh, we can confirm on the device that the technician is is working with the right asset. So that's that's very important from a from a safety standpoint because a lot of asset intensive businesses, pipeline companies for example, will have thousands and thousands of the, the exact same valve. So you know knowing where where that asset is 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 important. It's also nice to be able to track the technician and make sure that they're performing that the work at, at the correct spot. Uh, and get and get um, you know from an audit perspective. So geolocation re really is helpful and uh, has been built into to V work. I've heard the term disconnected mobile mentioned. Can you tell us about that and how it might be applied in oil and gas? Yeah, absolutely. I you know during the during the slide deck we we use that term disconnected or, or offline, and a lot of our oil and gas customers. Uh, simply don't have network availability at all of their locations. So that could be a uh, you know a, a pipeline in in East Texas, um, but it could also be a, a platform in the Gulf of Mexico or a, or a well pad in in Oklahoma. And it may be that there is no cellular, there is no um, Wi-Fi, um, or that the method of connectivity is very expensive and, and at a premium, something like a satellite out on, on a ship. So the ability to perform all of your work disconnected um, and still get through a shift and still get through the day is, is really what disconnected mobile is all about. Do technicians have to carry all the documentation on the tablet or can they pick and choose which information they want to download? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question, and it speaks to the evolution of the hardware as well. With more storage and faster processors and more memory on, on the AJAX device now, we can actually bring down more information more quickly. But what we've learned over time is that the, the technician really needs the ability to pick and choose. We don't we don't need all of the engineering drawings related to the asset, so, so why bring those down and why increase the payload to the device, right? So um, it, it is a pick and choose model, but it can also be uh, overridden by corporate that says, you know, we have to push out these hazmat uh, details. We have to push out these MSDS sheets. Uh, there's a new safety bulletin that's going out to the to the pipeline techs or the or the mechanics. Let's get that out there 
on this batch of work orders today. So all of that capability is, is built into VWORK. Can you operate VWORK in online real-time mode or is it always offline and then you manually yeah. sync? Yeah, great question. So you can, it's it's kind of a hybrid approach. It's it's designed really to be an offline model, but we've recognized that there are areas that you need to be kind of real time or at least have the ability to go and request things. So a couple of examples of that are, are documents, as I just mentioned, you might be out uh, at a work location where there's decent coverage and you're performing a set of tasks and you would like that engineering drawing or you would like the, the latest training video on this particular part. So we, we've now added that where you can manually request uh, and go real time and, and go pull down that document. The other um, use case we saw, see on the inventory side is uh, maybe in a warehouse for, for receiving where um, I'm, I'm receiving uh, against a known list of purchase orders, but a truck rolls up with with an unexpected delivery that that wasn't you know scheduled for me to do today so i can go online real time and download that purchase order and all the lines and all the shipping information and make sure that i can transact um, in the warehouse when you take a photo while using vwork do you need to exit the app to upload the photo and can you mark up a photo while inside the app so you can you can you can take a photo. Obviously, you need that capability on the device. The Ajax devices have the have the cameras, um, so you can take a photo. You don't need to exit the app. We used to, but that's a, a recent enhancement to the product that it, it's essentially built into that screen that Louis showed you. And you can mark up a photo, so you can redline it and you use native tools on the on the Microsoft platform on the Ajax platform to do that. And then we keep track of revisions. Uh, and then push them up to the to the ERP so that they're cataloged inside of the ERP against the asset and against the work order. A lot of technicians find barcode useful. Does VWork have barcode enabled? It, it does. Again, obviously, we need that capability on the device, whether it's a integrated laser scanner with a 1D and 2D capability, or it's or it's simply a camera that's on board, we can recognize any barcode, any symbology. Um, it makes sense to barcode enable certain fields, obviously work order number, employee number, asset number, stock item number, bin locations, et cetera. Um, all of those are, are natively turned on inside the app, but the capability exists to, to really barcode anything and to, and, to, and to read anything as well. This opens up a lot of opportunity with Oracle for our Ajax partners. And speaking directly to those Ajax partners, if you have clients already on or working on Oracle, this application can add immediate value with, with mobile asset intelligence for those hazardous areas. Now, I wanted to get to a few questions from our audience. Uh, Charles, there's a question coming when you mentioned inventory. Are there mobile applications that work on Ajax devices in the warehouse and storerooms as well? Uh, yes, there are. So VWORK is part of a suite of applications for asset-intensive businesses. Um, the, the suite name is VMobile. Obviously, we've seen VWORK today. But an example of an inventory application is, is VStores. And really, that performs all of the basic functions of a storeroom technician. You know, item lookup, cycle counts, inventory transfers, pick, pack, put away, uh, purchase order receiving, etc. Another question. Can you summarize a particular benefit from a recent customer implementation? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's that's a great question. So um, we've got a number of projects that have recently gone live, and we were chatting with a customer uh, just just last week, and her name was uh, Tamara. She's a maintenance supervisor at Mount Air, and she said, "I'll just quote it back. You know, hey, we had no issues with production whatsoever. The Silo City location reported 99% of work was done with the tablets last week." And this made this has made a huge difference in their backlog. Thank you very much. So that that's you know kind of direct from the source. And really, what we're looking to to see happen is is that just you know quick hit productivity gain right there with the text, and just you know make their life easier and enable them to to get through more work you know more quickly. So we have an extra moment or two. We'll we'll take one more question. It was more specific with regard to sorting the work order. 
uh, and they're asking if there's a way to sort the work order history on an asset uh, in an ascending or descending manner. Yeah, so we again, this is an area that's kind of evolved and, and continues to, to evolve, I would say. Um, you know, certain assets are, are, are inspected, you know, once a minute. Some certain assets are inspected, um, you know, by, via some kind of IoT device and some assets are uh, worked on or inspected, you know, once a year. So obviously that algorithm about how much work order history data or asset history data we bring down is very important to us and, and we have to cut it off at some point. But generally it's, it's, it's in kind of chronological descending order, you know, the most recent work first is shown. Um, we've added a Google style search to the history because a common question was what what material vendor was used on this? Was this an OEM part or it was an aftermarket product that was added? And Or, you know, can I search for the technician's name and um, find that technician because I'm struggling with the job and I can get that guy's phone number out of out of VWork and, and give that guy a call and ask him, or ask him or her kind of what happened on, on that particular job. So, yeah, that you can search it and you can sort it. Well, many thanks to both you and Luis. Uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for the audience's time. That is all the time we have for today. If we did not answer your question here, we will respond to you by email. Also, be sure to fill out the follow-up survey that you will receive right after this broadcast. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to having you back again for our next Ajax webinar. Goodbye.